Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we've got an interesting one. I'm going to show you how to open the same report from either a form field criteria, like a, a field on a form, like an order ID, or if that form's not open, how to prompt the user for the criteria. Today's a very interesting question from Samantha in Clinton, Oklahoma, one of my silver members. Now, this is paraphrased because we went back and forth on the forum and I'm just trying to understand what she's looking for. But basically, it's this. If I open an invoice report while the order form is open, the query uses forms order F order ID to get the currently open invoice to display from whatever order is displayed on the, on, the, on the screen. OK, now, is it possible to open an invoice from somewhere else, say the main menu without having the order form open, but also not having the user see that unfriendly prompt? Maybe give them something nice like enter order ID. Okay, let me show you what she's talking about first. All right, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. Now, we have a customer form. We have an order form. And on here is an order, right? And if I click on the invoice button, it opens up the invoice report. And the invoice report gets the order ID from this form. In fact, there's a query underneath it called order invoice queue. And there's a parameter right over here that says, get your parameter, get your criteria from forms order F order ID. Okay. And that's not a problem as long as this form is open. But if you try to open the report from somewhere else and that's not open, right? Let me right click print preview. You get that first forms order F order ID. And all Samantha really wants is for that to be some kind of nice, you know, uh, pretty parameter name like, you know, enter the order ID or something that's not that because the user's not going to understand what that means. Now, I tried a bunch of different ways to play around with this and I cannot come up with a solution that does not involve VBA. So if any of you can figure it out, let me know. I tried like three or four different things. I even asked chat GPT, which is kind of useless in this manner, but <laughs> it usually is when it comes to access. Um, it's, it's good with VBA, but it's not good with regular access solutions. So I'm going to show you a way to do this, but it's going to involve a little bit of programming. First, some prerequisites. If you have not yet watched my invoicing video, go watch this so you understand how my invoicing system is built, especially the order form and the invoice report and how they get their values. And to get that value from the customer, if the form is not open, we're going to use an input box. Yes, there are many different ways you can do it. Input box is the easiest, I think. So we're going to use this. So go watch this video too if you have not yet already. And now optionally, we're going to add a few little embellishments to it. We're going to add an if then statement. We're going to use DLOOKUP to make sure that order exists. And we're going to use the NZ function. Now, these last three are optional. You don't have to watch those if you don't want to. I'm going to show you the basics first and then show you some extra little tips you can throw in there. OK, so go watch these first, and then come on back. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the criteria from the order invoice queue. I built it this way initially because it's easiest for beginners to understand by just putting a criteria right inside the query. So open up the query in design view, the order invoice queue. And we're just literally going to take this out of here because order ID already exists in here way at the beginning, right? We got order t.star. That was for the criteria. All right. So save that. Now, if we go and open up the order and hit invoice, we're getting everything in there, right? We're getting all the line items, all the invoices. So you have to put a criteria in the report itself. But I'm not going to put it in the report. I'm going to put it in the button that opens the report. OK, we're going to add a where condition. Now, if you look in the code for the button, right click build event. We've got me refresh, so it refreshes the current record and saves it to the table. And then we're going to open report order invoice R AC view preview for print preview. Next, we're going to go to the end of that line and go comma, comma. We're going to use a where condition. I prefer where conditions over filters. All right, we're going to say where the order ID in that report equals close up your quotes and order ID. What that's going to do is it's going to take the order ID off the current form, which is the order form, and then use that as a criteria. All right, save it, close it. Let's close this and reopen it. And now when I hit the invoice button, the button supplies the criteria. There's just order one. Okay, if I go to another one and I hit the button, and there you go. And it supplies the criteria. We got order three. Easy enough, right? Okay, now. What Samantha wants is for her people to be able to do a quick lookup without having to go to the customer, open the order from blah, blah, all that stuff. So if she wants a button here, we'll just prompt them, what's the order ID? Okay. 
So for that, we're just going to use an input box. You could use a form field. You can do there's lots of different ways you can do this. I think the input box is the easiest. So here we're going to just put open report or open invoice. How about that? Open invoice. Okay. Right click build event. That brings us in here. Now we don't want status hello world. This is our hello world button, right? Get rid of that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to input box the user and say enter order ID or whatever friendly prompt you want. And when we get that response, we got to save it somewhere, right? So we're going to dim a variable, dim s as a string. We're going to say s equals input box. All right, what's the prompt? What do you want the user to see? Enter order ID like that. The rest of these are optional. You can give it a title, right? Like, like open invoice or whatever you want. All right, you can specify a default value here, although I recommend you don't, all right, for this particular case. Close that and press enter. So now they're going to ask the user to enter an order ID. Now we'll put one simple check here just to make sure they put something in or didn't hit cancel. We're going to say if S equals an empty string, then exit sub. If they don't put anything in or they hit cancel, input box returns an empty string and it'll just exit out of the sub. Okay. We'll put some more checks in in a few minutes. Now we have S, we have the order ID as a string. So we're going to say do command dot open report. Same thing we had in the button in the order form, right? Open report, order invoice R, comma, AC view preview, comma, comma, where the order ID in that report equals S, whatever the user typed in. Save it. Always good to throw in a debug compile once in a while. Close it. Close the main menu. Let's reopen it. And now open invoice. Okay, enter order ID. Give me a three. And there's your criteria. There's order three. See? And it's a nice, friendly prompt. Enter order ID one. And there's order one. See, we're just supplying the criteria from the button that opens up the report instead of having the report get the criteria from a query. Now, if you're happy with that, great, we're done. But there are some other things you may want to check. For example, what happens if the user types in uh, something like that? Okay, a bunch of letters. You're going to get and, and a parameter value. Okay, so let's check first of all to make sure that the user has put in a numeric value. And for that, we can use the isNumeric function. If not isNumeric s, then message box invalid order ID exit sub. All right, isNumeric is going to take this value s, which is a string, and say, is there a number value in that string? And if not, it's going to say, uh -uh, nah, can't handle it. All right, let's save that. Come back over here. Let's try that again. Put a bunch of garbage in and hit OK. All right, there we go. Invalid order ID. See, nice. It's making our code a little more user friendly. How about if they do something like this? They put in a big number like that, 315, blah, 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 blah. It's a number. It's numeric, but that order doesn't exist in the database. So they get an empty invoice. Now, yes, you could use an on no data uh, event in here, but an easier way is just to check to see if that invoice exists, if that order ID exists. So let's go back to our code. Let's do a DLOOKUP. DLOOKUP's nice and easy, right? Now we need a value to store the DLOOKUP returned value in. So we're going to say order ID as a long. All right, we're going to come down here. Now we're going to look. Let's, let's put some comments in here too. If nothing is entered or the user hits cancel, all right? If a non-numeric value is entered, all right? And remember, Comments aren't necessarily for other people. They're for you 10 years from now. I wish I would have commented my code that I wrote 10, 15 years ago. I was like, I don't need comments. Yeah, yeah. Older you is going to thank you for your comments. Okay. So now we're going to say make sure order exists. I'm going to do that here. Okay. Order ID equals NZ D lookup. What are we looking up? An order ID in the order T where the order ID equals S. Now, at this point, we know S has a numeric value in it, so it's safe to just send it S. It's going to tack it on the end of that string, comma, zero. So what's going to happen is we're going to look up an order ID from the order table where the order ID equals whatever the user typed in. Yes, that's perfectly valid. If that doesn't exist, it's going to return a null value, which NZ will then convert to a zero. That's the beauty of NZ. Now we can say if order ID equals zero, then message box order not found or whatever exit sub else open it up and if save it 
debug compile, of course. All right, looks good. Come up here. Try this again. Let's hit cancel. Okay, that returned an empty string. Ready? Let's try it again. Big number. Hit OK. Order not found. So there you go. See how simple that is? Just a few lines of code, but it makes your database a whole lot more usable. You can use the same report, the same query. The users can now open it from both places without any change. All right, and now you've given yourself a nice quick way to look up that invoice from here, verify the information is valid, and then show them the invoice they want. See, nice and easy. This is why we learn a little bit of programming, folks. See, just a little bit of VBA programming can really make your databases go to the next level, a whole nother level. If you want to learn more about opening a specific record when you open a report, I got another separate video on that. Go watch this. It's basically what I just showed you now, but there's a couple of little tips in it. I cover that is numeric function along with a whole ton of other functions. Is error, is null, is date, string functions. I've got a whole comprehensive guide to access functions. It spans multiple classes. Check it out. It's on my website. I'll put a link down below. And of course, if you like learning with me and you want to learn some more programming, I got tons of developer lessons, I'll cover all kinds of stuff, and I take it from the beginning to the end straight through as you should learn it. So check it out again. It's on my website. You'll find links down below. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. 
Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher on the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.